So I was in a little Twitter convo with my friend, the Godless Cranium, and uh, he was opining that the movie Aquaman was a big pile of S. Yeah, a big pile of S. Those are the actual words he used. And once I got over my shock at the language, um, at the language he used to describe the film, I had to beg to differ, actually. I kind of honestly thought Aquaman was kind of decent. Not great, but not terrible. Better than I thought it was going to be, and I would give it a solid B-. minus. I thought it was a reasonably good movie of the genre that we are talking about. Now, keep in mind, one of the things I've gotten really, really good at over the years in seeing movies like this is calibrating my expectations appropriately to the product I'm about to partake of. I mean, come on. This is a movie about a guy who talks to fish. <laughs> I mean, how, how, honestly, how, 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 realistically speaking, how good is it going to be in any reasonable sense of the term good? Is there going to be like, you know, really good acting? There's going to be really dramatic plot developments and profound? No. Is, is it going to be up for any, any Academy Awards anytime soon? No. Save for like sound design or something. Or costumes. And even there, they were a little bit flaky, to be quite honest. But I've become really good, almost an expert at calibrating my expectations appropriately to the type of movie I am seeing. And in this particular case, I judge these movies on a few really important criteria, and then that's about all I judge it on. One, the, the actors. Are they charismatic leads? Are they charismatic and engaging and they're entertaining to watch? Yes. He's not Robert Downey Jr., but he's pretty good. And I, I, you know, I took my wife, I dragged my wife to the movie. Yeah, yeah, I did. Sorry. <laughs> I dragged my wife to the movie and she liked him. Um, two, and this is probably the most important one. This one I give really high marks for. Are there really good action set pieces in the movie? Now, this had a couple of really good ones as far as I was concerned. There's one that takes place in... Sicily, where they're fighting on rooftop to rooftop, and I thought it was first rate. Uh, there's another one that I thought was really effective, where they're on a boat, and they start being attacked by these mysterious sea creatures, and then first there are ten, then there are a hundred, then there are a thousand, then they're surrounded by these mysterious sea creatures. I thought that was really good. And there's a couple others. There's a big battle at the end that I thought was really effective in terms of the action set pieces. So I gave it high marks for that. Maybe a solid A in that department. Now, the other criteria that is probably the most important is the, the lines. Are there funny action movie quips? Are there funny little, you know, I'll be back. Do they do that? Do they have memorable ones? There weren't necessarily memorable ones, but there was a bunch and they were relatively, it was relatively witty. So I gave it high marks in all three of those regards. And those are actually really the only things that I judge a movie like this on. Is it reasonably entertaining for the two hours? Way too long. Way too long. Now, there are, so brings us to some of the problems of the movie. It's, I think, two hours, 20 minutes running time, and you start to feel it for sure. And the, the biggest problem with the movie is there's a whole lot of meaningless backstory that they, for some mysterious reason, they, they, they feel like they have to stop the movie dead in its tracks to explain you know, a lot of exposition about the kingdoms of Atlantis and where they went to war and this and that. And a lot of it you just don't care about. Or you care about it minimally, but not enough to slow down the entire movie to give you tons of expo exposition. Really, really poorly done. Uh, what's key for a movie like that is momentum. So if you have a long movie like that, you want to try and you have a story that you have to backstory that you have to put in there. You've got to be a little bit more creative in terms of sifting it into the action so that you don't stop the movie dead in its tracks to just explain this this story. And this literally 45 minutes of the movie is explaining different things going on, different with the seven kingdoms, uh, the kingdoms of Atlantis, how they went to war and this and that. And they kill the whole movie. Every, practically every 15 minutes they stop the movie to explain give you you know five ten more minutes of backstory so that part of it those two parts of it he was correct but the rest of it you know i gotta be honest i i maybe i've become an expert over the years at figuring out what type of movie i'm about to see and and like i said calibrating myself correctly but i will say in godless cranium's defense 
I drag my wife to a lot of these movies. Um, and she generally really likes the good ones. She loved Wonder Woman. She liked the first Iron Man a lot. She loved the first Avengers. So my wife is a good barometer. She actually has really good taste in films. Uh, the stuff she watches on Netflix, and it's always the good stuff. It's always the high quality. You know, she's really good taste in movies and things like that. And she hated it. <laughs> yeah, she absolutely hated it. She was like really annoyed at me for dragging her to the movie. She was making fun of me for the rest of the night for, for taking her to this abomination. So, you know, for what it's worth, take that for what it's worth. That's a pretty strong indication. Um, but on the plus side, you know, box office, it's made north of a billion dollars. It's actually outperformed Wonder Woman. Now that tells you something because when these movies don't do well, when they disappoint at the box office, that's a really strong indication of where they're at. So that's all on that. And there's my wife right there. Amen.